and welcome to a new tutorial of Made by Seam. This is my beautiful Twisty Elise shawl. I made the video in Dutch a while ago and I got so many requests to do this one in English and um, I waited and I waited any a little bit longer and then one of my friends, uh, Doris, she sent uh, a beautiful um, ball of yarn with a, the ombre effect in it and some uh, one thread with glitter. Look, I'm not sure if you can see that, but it has a beautiful effect on the shawl. She sent me that, and I thought that that ball of yarn is like the best ball of yarn um, to do this tutorial with in English. Um, now, the yarn is available on her website, and I'm going to um, add all the details down below into the description box. And many, many thanks to Doris. I really appreciate it. And I know, Doris, I know that you sent it to me so I could try it out, but I I just found it the, the most perfect yarn to do this tutorial with. So, um, thank you for that. Um... The twisty Elise, like I said, um, I absolutely love the pattern. It's really addictive and it looks, it might look uh, intimidating, but it actually is really easy. If you follow up all the instructions in the video, um, I am absolutely sure that you can make this. Now, if you think that the video, if I crochet too fast in the video, there is an option that you can um, slow down the video. Please use that feature because um, that will help you. All right. Um, my voice might sound funny to you, but well, hey, as you can, see, whenever you can see the stitches I'm doing, it is okay, right? Anyway, um, I hope you enjoy watching the video, and if you do so. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, because that will help me out a lot. And um, hit that notification bell, so whenever I upload another video uh, or a giveaway, because there will be giveaways coming up soon in English, uh, international giveaways. Um, so you can attend that as well. Um, but also, you know, I... Um, upload English videos or Dutch videos but I'm gonna put that down into the um, uh, title of the video so you can see straight away if it is a Dutch or a English tutorial anyway um, I'm a chatterbox as you guys know so <laughs> I'm gonna hold it in now and I'm gonna wish you um, a lot a lot of fun making this beautiful shawl For this tutorial, I'm going to use the uh, Candy Opal by Stanley Yarns, and um, this yarn um, contains 85% uh, soft cotton, 50% lurex, it is 300 grams, and it has 900 meters per cake. Um, and this one was uh, gifted to me. Um, by Doris and she is from Just DD Design. She has her own um, website and she has her own um, Facebook group uh, and YouTube channel. Uh, I'm gonna link everything uh, down below into the description box because you might find it really interesting um, to Go to her website and check out all the written patterns that she has. She also has free tutorials available on her YouTube channel. Um, and I spoke to her and I even think that you can buy this yarn um, on her website. If it's not there, you can send her a message via her website. Because um, I know she will, um, if you speak to her... Um, and you can get to an agreement. I'm sure that she will ship this 
uh, worldwide. So um, just ask her um, and you will find the all the details down below into the description box. I'm going to take it out of the package because I want to show you guys how beautiful this looks. Look at that. So, so beautiful. So I'm going to use that. Um, and then I'm not sure because I've never worked with um, this yarn. So I'm not sure if I'm either going to use a three and a half millimeter crochet hook or um, an F hook, which is a 3.75 millimeter crochet hook, or I even might use a four millimeter crochet hook. I'm just going to give it a try first with the three and a half millimeter, but it is possible that later on in the video you see me crochet with um, another crochet hook size if I. Um, if I'm going to change the hook size, I'm going to write it down right here in the middle, in the center of the screen. So I'm going to use that. Then I will be using a pair of scissors. Um, I might use um, measuring tape, a darning needle, but I forgot to get myself one. But I'm also going to use a darning needle. and. What I always really love to use in my tutorials or, or any projects, I'm going to use a scale. Because um, when you use different kind of yarns, you never know how much yarn you will have left uh, to do the very last bit of your project. So uh, it might be easier or a good idea to use a scale and just weigh how much yarn you have left. Uh, all about that, I'm going to explain that into the video and um, I'm going to show you guys how to crochet the twisty Elise. Okay, I'm going to start off by making a slip knot on my hook. Just like that. Now chain four, one, two, three, and four, and slip stitch into the very first stitch, just like that. Now you have a really, really small circle. We're going to work into that circle. Chain three, and this chain three counts as your very first double crochet stitch. Oh, I forgot to tell you something guys. My video is in US terms. Okay, So chain three and then two more double crochets into the circle. One. And two. Chain three and three more double crochets into the circle. One two and three. Chain three. Three double crochets into the circle. One, two, and three. Chain three and three double crochets into the same circle. One. and three. And this is what your work looks like. Next row. Chain one, turn your work. Skip the very first stitch 
and slip stitch into the next stitch which is the center stitch of the three double crochet stitches slip stitch into the next and slip stitch into the chain space chain three one two three two double crochets into the same into the same chain space chain three and three double crochet stitches into the same chain space one two and three chain one skip the double crochet stitches and go to your point here and make three double crochet stitches in there chain three and three double crochet stitches into the same chain space two and three chain one skip the double crochet stitches and go to the next chain space three double crochets two and three chain three and three double crochet stitches one two three and after the second row this is what your work looks like Chain one, turn your work, skip the first and go to the middle or the center stitch, slip stitch, slip stitch into the next stitch, and slip stitch into the chain space, chain three, which counts as the very first double crochet stitch. Two double crochets into the same chain space, chain three, and three double crochet stitches into the same chain space, one, two, three, chain one. Now go to the chain one space here, make one double crochet, a chain two, and a double crochet. Chain one, go to the point here and make a Make three double crochet stitches, one, two, three, chain three, and three double crochet stitches. I did that wrong here. I should make that look nicer. So chain three, and three double crochet stitches. two and three chain one now go to the chain one space here double crochet a chain two and a double crochet chain one three double crochet stitches one two, three, chain three, and three double crochet stitches into the same chain space. Chain one, 
and after three rows your work looks like this. Next row, chain one, turn your work, skip one, go to the center stitch, slip stitch, next slip stitch, and slip stitch in the next. So you end up in the chain space here, chain three for your very first double crochet stitch, two double crochets, chain three, and three double crochet stitches, one, two, three. Chain one. Now, this is the sort of a V stitch here. The stitch that we did in the previous row, the um, double crochet, the chain two, and double crochet into the same chain one space. From now on, I know it's, I think it's not called a V stitch, this stitch, but I'm going to call it the V stitch, okay? So we know what, you're, what we're talking about. Um, Whenever you're working on the stitch closest to the border on this side or the point when you're working on the very first stitch between these stitches here, you will be working in the first stitch. Okay, I know that doesn't make any sense at all right now, but I wanted to say that so you will get, um, you will get it earlier than I just wanted to say that right now, okay? So this is the very first stitch of the row after you did the um, side stitch. Here the uh, three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets, and the chain one. So we will be working into the first double crochet stitch here. Make one double crochet stitch in there. Then chain one, and now into the chain space here, five double crochet stitches. One, two, three, four, and five. And number five. Chain one. Now this stitch, the second leg of the V stitch, is really is the closest stitch to um, the point. So we will be working into that stitch. One double crochet into that stitch. Okay. So now it looks like this. Chain one, go to the point, three double crochets, one, two, three, chain three, and three double crochets into the same chain space, three, chain one, a V stitch very first stitch after you did the point. So one double crochet in there, chain one, five double crochets into the chain two space of the previous row, two, three, four, and five, chain one, and into the second leg of this V stitch, one double crochet. Chain one. Now go to the side stitch here, the border stitch, I don't know how to call it. Three double crochets. Chain three.
and three double crochets into the same chain space. One, two, and three. And after your fourth row, this is what your shawl should look like. Okay. Chain one. Turn your work, skip the first, go into the second stitch, slip stitch, in the next slip stitch, slip stitch into the chain space, chain three, two double crochets, chain three, Three a double crochets. Two and three. Chain one. Now the next stitch is a chain is a um, one double crochet stitch here of the previous row. As this stitch is the closest stitch to the border here or to the side stitch, you will be making on top of this stitch a V stitch. So on top of the of one double crochet a V stitch. One double crochet, chain two, one double crochet. Chain one. Next you see the five five double crochet stitches of the previous row. Skip the first and work one double crochet on each of the next three stitches. Three. Chain one. Skip the next. Then you have a chain space. And then you have the last double crochet stitch. And then you have the point. So this double crochet stitch is the stitch right next to the point. One double crochet means we have to work a V stitch into that one double crochet stitch. So double crochet, chain two, and double crochet. Don't forget the chain one after your stitch. Then go to the point, three double crochets, one, two, three, chain three. And three double crochets. One, two, and three. Chain one. One double crochet. On top of that one double crochet, a V stitch. And the chain one. Five double crochets. Skip the first and on the next three double crochet stitches we will be crocheting one double crochet on each of the next three. Two and three. Chain one. Skip the next skip the chain space and here is the very last double crochet stitch of this row before you are at the border or the side stitch. On top of that one double crochet stitch a V stitch. And the V stitch is one double crochet, a chain two, one double crochet, a chain one. Next is the side stitch. Three double crochets into the chain sp three space, a chain three, and three double crochet stitches. One, two, and three.
and this is what it looks like after your one, two, three, one, two, three, fifth row. Chain one, turn your work, skip the first, go into the second stitch, slip stitch, slip stitch in the next, and slip stitch into the chain space, chain three, three, sorry, two double crochets into the same chain space, chain three, and two, sorry, three double crochets into the same chain space, two, and three, chain one, next, next is the V stitch, the first leg of the V stitch is really close to the side stitch here, to the border, because this is a V stitch, in the first stitch, just one double crochet stitch, and chain one, into the chain space here, chain 2 space of the previous row, 5 double crochet stitches, 1, 2, 2, Three, four, and five. Chain one. The second leg here is not the stitch that is really close to the side stitch or the point. So we're skipping that one. Next. Next you see the three double crochets of the previous row. Skip the first and into the center stitch just one double crochet stitch. Chain one. V stitch. Into the V stitch five double crochets. One, two, three, four, and five. Chain one. This leg of the V-stitch is really cl close to the point, so into that stitch one double crochet, chain one. This is the point, and in the point we always crochet three double crochet stitches, chain three, and three double crochet stitches. and three. Chain one. A V-stitch. This is the stitch that is close to the point. So on top of this double crochet of the V-stitch, one double crochet. Chain one. Five double crochets into the chain space of the V-stitch. Two. Three, four, five. Chain one. Next, three double crochet stitches. One double crochet on top of the center stitch. Chain one. V stitch. Five double crochets into the chain two space of the V stitch. Two. Three, four, and five. Chain one. Now, the last leg here, the last double crochet of the V stitch, is really is the closest stitch to the side. So, one double crochet on top of that stitch. 
chain one side stitch same as the point the three double crochets chain three and three double crochets one two three and this is what your shawl looks like so far one, two, three, four, five, six rows. Because you don't count this one because this belongs to the first row. Yeah? So one, two, three, four, five, and number six. Can you see the pattern already? I love it. Right. Next row, chain one, turn your work, skip the first, go to the second, slip stitch, slip stitch in the next, and slip stitch into the chain space, chain three, two double crochets, chain three, and three double crochets into the same chain space. One, two, three. Chain one. Well, next, here is a double crochet stitch. This double crochet stitch is really close to the side stitch. So, on top of that double crochet, a V stitch. Double crochet, chain two, and double crochet on top of the same stitch. Chain one. Five double crochets, skip the first, and on, on top of the next three stitches, one double crochet on each of these three stitches. Two, three. You should have one stitch of the five left. You skip that one. Then the next stitch here is just one double crochet stitch. And a V stitch on top of that double crochet stitch. So, sorry, I've got the chain one. Please do not forget the chain one. So, double crochet. Chain two, double crochet, chain one. Next, five double crochet stitches. Skip the first, and on each of the next three stitches, one a double crochet stitch. Chain one. The next stitch here because we're going to skip this one and we're going to skip the chain one space. The next stitch is double crochet stitch close to the, to the um, point here. It is a double crochet stitch, so therefore we're going to crochet a V stitch on top of that one double crochet stitch. Chain one, point stitch, so three double crochets, chain three, and three double crochets. Chain one, next double crochet, so on top of the one double crochet, it should be a V stitch, double crochet, chain, chain two, double crochet, and a chain one. Five double crochets, skip the first, and on the next three stitches, one double crochet stitch on each of the three stitches. One, two, three, chain one one double crochet stitch 
on top of that one double crochet stitch a V stitch chain one five double crochets skip the first and on each of the next three stitches one double crochet stitch chain one skip the next skip the chain space and the very next stitch is a double crochet stitch stitch which is really the closest stitch to the um, side stitch so a V stitch on top of that double crochet stitch and a chain one three double crochets one two three chain three and three double crochets and this is what your work should look like oh. basically it is a repetition of the last two rows um, and I'm saying the last two rows because you want to end this shawl um, on a row where you have the V stitches in because then you will be ready to do the border okay um, please do not forget to um, crochet on top of the side stitch here and here same on the other side please do not forget that okay so on the next stitch here let me show you I'm just going to do that one more time just want to make sure that it is all clear to you guys chain one turn skip the first go to the next slip stitch and slip stitch into the uh, chain space chain three for the very first double crochet stitch two double crochets chain three and three double crochets chain one V stitch double crochet border because it is a V stitch of the previous row it's just one double crochet on top of that first leg of the V stitch chain one and five double crochets into the chain two space three four and five chain one next three double crochets one double crochet on the center stitch there you go chain one V stitch five double crochets chain one three double crochets so on top of the uh, center stitch one double crochet and in the very last stitch of five double crochets three four five chain one now this is the point and that means that in the last leg of the v-stitch one double crochet chain one and in the point three double crochets chain three and three double crochets chain one okay 
I hope this is clear. You guys understand how this pattern works. There is a little trick. Because here you see the V-stitch. On every V-stitch you know there will be um, five double crochets. On top of the five double crochets, three double crochets. Then one double crochet. On top of that one double crochet, you start the whole process, process again. Because you want to have the V-stitch. See? Because wherever you look in the pattern, on top of the V-stitch, you should have five double crochets. Do not forget the center stitches here, or the um, side stitches here. Here, and here, here, and here. Everything else is basically the same. The side here is always um, three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets. And when you start off the three double crochets of the new row, um, you replace the double first double crochet with a chain three. Center stitch is, is exactly the same. Three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets. Okay, uh, now I'm, I'm not sure how many um, rows I can do, um, so I'll keep going on and um, I'm gonna let you know whenever I'm ready to do the border. Um, so please continue watching so you know how many rows I did or you know how much uh, grams of yarn I have left um, and how much I need for the border. Right? Well, enjoy! See you later! Now, this is what my shawl looks like. Okay. I ended up on a row where I did the V stitches. So the V stitches and the three double crochets in a row. Right? That should be your very last row before you are going to do the border or edging. Just before I did my very last row, I weighed my, um, my yarn and it was 56 um, grams and now I have 45 grams left. So I almost, no, I, I used up about 11 uh, grams for the very last row. I do need about um, three times the amount of yarn for my border. And then I want to add some tassels. So whenever I'm going to do another row right now, um, and I, then I would need two rows, then I wouldn't, would not have enough for, um, for my border and the tassels that I'm going to add to my uh, shawl. So for me, this is the point I'm going to stop working uh, on my shawl and I'm, start wor and I'm going to start working on my border. Okay? So, like I said before, this is the right side facing you and your very last row should be a row with the V-stitches. Now, the beginning of the row is basically exactly the same as we did before. Chain 1, skip the first and slip stitch into the second, the third and, two into, and into the chain space. Chain 3, 2 double crochets into the same chain space. Chain three, and three double crochets. One, two, three. Now, chain one, yarn over twice, go straight to the uh, v stitch here. So um, in the previous row we worked into the 
the very first leg or the very first double crochet as well. We're not going to work in that stitch right now. We're going to work directly into the V-stitch. So yarn over twice, insert your hook, uh, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. So you just did a trip, um, a triple crochet. Chain three. Now go back to the very last stitch here. This is the, the very first stitch, but this is the last stitch. Go underneath these two strands of yarn. So this is the chain three. Go to this stitch, yarn over and slip stitch. And that is called a pico. Yarn over twice, make a triple crochet, chain three, pico. Yarn over twice, and a pico. So now I have three triple crochet and three um, picots. And I want to have six triple crochet stitches and in between a picot. So I should end up having six triple crochet stitches and five pico stitches. One, two, three, four, five. I need just one more triple crochet. There you go. Now go to the center stitch of the three double crochet of the previous row and then just single crochet in there. Yarn over twice and go to the next V-stitch. Triple crochet, chain three and a pico. Triple crochet. Pico. Triple crochet. Another pico. One, two, three, four, and I need six. Five. And my very last triple crochet. So whenever it is your last triple crochet, you don't do a, a, a pico after that one, okay? So go to the center stitch here and single crochet. And this is what you do until you have reached your point. Okay? So whenever you're there, um, I'll be back to show you what to do next. And with a point, I mean the part here, this part. Right? See you in a bit. Well, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, then chain one. And this is where my point is. Now, um, I'm going to do it different than I did in my Dutch video. But I'm going to show you what I did in my Dutch video as well. Okay? So for this show, I'm going to do it different. I want, um, when I did my um, Dutch video, I wanted a, a tassel in the point and on both sides of the show. Now, for this one, I just want um, a, two tassels on the side of the show and not here in the point. I'm going to show you first what I did in my um, Dutch video. Okay, so after I did the shell here, I did a chain one and I just made three double crochets, a chain three, and three more double crochets into the point. And after that, I did a chain one. Okay? And then I started over doing my shells in, um, into the space here again. All right? Now, for my, for this video, I'm going to do it exactly the same as I did in, um, uh, for the baby point show. So after I did the chain one, Um, no, after I did the chain one, um, now I'm not going to do a chain one. Sorry about that. Um, here is the um, point of the previous row and I'm just going to single crochet into the second or in the center stitch. So in the second double crochet of the point, okay? And then a triple crochet into the point, a picot stitch, and more um, triple crochet stitches in there and picots just like we did here but I'm going to do more than six so I'm going to show you why I'm going to do the uh, six that I um, did before and then I'm going to show you why I need more in my point okay so see you in a minute okay so now I did six Okay, so the six um, do, um, triple crochet stitches. Now, whenever I'm going to um, single crochet into the second double crochet of the previous row, just like that, my point looks like this. And it won't stay flat, because when I press my work here, it will bend over like that. Or it will, how do you say that? You probably know what I mean, right? So, therefore, um, I'm not going to do six of them. I'm going to try eight or nine. It just, just depends on what material you're using, if um, um, eight or nine will do the trick for you. I cannot tell you how many you should do. It's just try um, what suits your yarn best, okay? Seven. And number eight. Now let's try it again. Single crochet into the second and see what happens. Yeah, 
I could do eight, but I think I'm going to do nine. I think I, I like that better. One, two, three, and one triple. So now I have um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine triple crochets, and in between all of the triple crochets, I have a pico. And then single crochet into the middle stitch. And this looks a lot better. See what I mean? Okay. So when you press it, it's, it stays flat on your surface. This is something you need to do on your leg when you're crocheting in the chair or um, on a flat surface like I have. Just press it and see what happens. For me, this is okay. Um, and then yarn over twice again. And make your six triple crochets with the pico stitch in between until you reach the end of this um, row. It's just as simple as that. So you could do option number one like I did in my Dutch video. Um, or you can do option number two like I'm doing in this video with the point here. I did a six treble crochet, then a chain one, and then into the side stitch here, three double crochets, a chain three, and three double crochet stitches. Chain one, turn your work, skip the first, uh, slip stitch in the second, in the third, and into the um, chain space here. Then get your pair of scissors, leave a little bit of a tail end, cut your yarn, and pull through. I'm going to use this tail end um, with my tassel and I will attach my tassel right here and therefore I wanted my tail end to end up right there okay um, and that's it we just have to make some tassels and then our shawl is ready okay um, this is the yarn that I have left. Um, let me see. I have 24 grams left. So um, I think I needed, how was it? 11 grams for just one row. Um, and I needed two, and then I would have um, used up more yarn um, because the further in the show you come, the more yarn you use so I did a good job just finishing up right where I did um, so now I'm gonna make some tassels I always use my phone to make tassels so three four five six Fourteen, fifteen. Yeah, I think that'll do. Fifteen. Get your yarn off your phone and cut it right here. So hold it like that. Where is my beginning of my shawl? 
um, be sure that the right side of the shawl is facing you and I'm going to get myself a little bit of a bigger hook because it will be easier to pull through so put your hook in there see this hook is not quite big enough I need a bigger hook okay mm. Let me see. There you go. Then pull through. You can make your tassels as big as you like. Okay? This is just the way I'm going to do this for um, for this shawl. And then I'm cut the, uh, the um, edges even. Just going to trim them. Okay? And you're going to do the exactly the same on the other side. Yes, I finished my shawl. And um, I'm going to show you a picture of the whole shawl. Because it won't fit into um, my screen over here. So here is the picture. And look how beautiful my shawl is. Um, I'm absolutely in love with this yarn if you want to buy the same yarn like I told you before um, it was sponsored by uh, one of my friends Doris she has her own YouTube channel she has her own uh, website um, all the links can be found into the description the box down below it is just DD design uh, so a huge thank you to Doris um, I really really appreciate this um, she just sent me so I could try it out but I thought um, I wanted to make a show with it and show you guys how beautiful it looks um, please check her out um, on her website um, on Facebook uh, she does both um, Dutch and English patterns uh, written patterns and also um, some um, crochet tutorials so please go and check everything out uh, once again many many thanks to Doris um, thank you so much for watching um, if you haven't already please subscribe to my youtube channel if you want. now if you decide not to make the shawl um, but you prefer to make the poncho I do have a video of that it is the uh, newborn poncho I'm gonna link it um, at the very end of this video um, it is a newborn size that I made, but I included all the instructions to make it any bigger size that you like. You can make it, if you just follow the instructions, you'll be fine to make it in any size. Alright, um, thank you so much for watching. Um, and in the meantime, until the next tutorial, whatever you do, please enjoy. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.